Okay, I've given the fuselage 24 hours to dry and you can see the glue on that seam line. See at the moment it's pretty messy. Um, on the top and the bottom. I'm just hoping there's no sort of stepping in there. Um, it doesn't feel like there is. It sort of feels pretty smooth and even though the even though the pieces sort of splayed out a little bit, they seem to have clamped okay. So what I want to do first is, before I start cleaning up the seams, I just want to make sure that I don't get any uh, sanding dust sort of uh, all over the interior. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some Tamiya tape, just some masking tape, and just put it over the areas where I don't want you know sanding dust to sort of go in all over the place. Uh, it doesn't have to be spot on. I can I can use a uh, the airbrush to blow out any sort of residue dust that I create, but the less it goes in there in the first place, the better. And so it's basically the main areas of concern are sort of where you know Porco Rosso and uh, and Fio sit. Just don't want to get a huge amount of dust in there. Now I am going to have to, of course, mask off these, some of these areas anyway when I get to painting the fuselage, but I'm going to do a better job of that when I get to that stage. First, I just want to concentrate on the sanding. Okay, there we go. All right, so um, I've got a couple of tools um, that I'm going to quickly show you that I use in sanding, and I've, I've used you know sanding sticks and what have you um, one of them I think which I've shown before is this uh, flex uh, flexible sander um, you know it's got like a belt on it and you get a range of different grits um, so the black ones I think are the coarse ones and to change the belts you simply squeeze give it a bit of slack and then you can just put the new belts back on. And the good thing, I mean, these I think are sort of designed with probably planes or boats in mind, just because it's so sort of common to have a uh, you know curved surface. And literally, so this is a pretty coarse grit, and so I'm just sort of. Running it across lightly. I've got a nub that I'm concerned about here, and there's also another one, I think, up here. I can't remember if it's here or here. It's covered up with glue, so it's a bit hard to see, but that's all right. So I'm going to sort of just concentrate on this first. Just do not want to sort of flatten it out. That's the uh, that's the one thing you you sort of got to be careful of. And so I just rock the fuselage back and forth just to ensure that I'm not that I'm not actually getting any sort of flat spots. Okay. So if we have a look at the first run, we can see that there's a gap there. That's where my finger is, a little gap there that I want to take care of before I start sort of going down. I do have to be careful of the uh, the panel lines. I may have to rescribe. I prefer not to, but I may have to. It might be all right. But sometimes it's not really that practical, so you might have a, a smaller spot that you need to get into. So another thing I use is these... Um, these are uh, Ultimate Modeling Products uh, Modeler Sanders Customizable Sanding Sheets. So they're basically sandpaper mounted on a uh, plastic card. And it means that you can sort of cut them down to size, to whatever size you want. And especially if you've got sort of narrow areas you want to get into, they're really good for that. So I've just sort of cut off a couple of pieces here. And I just want to, you know, get in there. I mean, in this case, I could probably use the, the flexible sander, but just to give you a bit of an example of the, uh, I guess, the range of tools that I use. I also have, you know, a series of sort of small sponging, um, small sanding sponges. 
So anything where, you know, you can sort of get into and um, make sure you get sort of a nice, you know, clean result of your sanding. Um, sort of, there's no, unfortunately there's no one tool you can sort of use for, uh, for everything. It's, um, you know, quite often you use a range of tools. So what I'm going to do is just, um, so I've got this back piece here and I'll go through the different grits. So I think I've sort of got the bulk of it sorted. So now what I might do is step down, I've got to remember which colours are, are which in the set. I think, um, yeah, so the red is ultra fine. And uh, so the tan colour, the brown, is the next, next one down, the next grit. Actually, technically, it's the next grit up. It's a higher grit. So again, I'm just. And when you're sanding, you know what you're essentially doing is you're not just taking material off, but you're creating a, a series of sort of scratches on the surface. And so as you use increasingly higher grit sandpaper, um, what you're effectively doing is making the scratches smaller and smaller and smaller until they are no longer sort of visible to the human eye. They'll still be there if you looked at it under a microscope, but they're, um, they're going to be so small you're not going to notice them. So, um, yeah. Let's see if we see that on camera. So you can see it's still a bit coarse up this end here. Um, there's a little bit of glue sort of still sitting there, so I uh, just need to. I'm trying to be as gentle as possible. You don't want to overdo it. But thankfully, I'm not seeing any sort of signs of uh, stepping. Touch wood, so far. Because stepping is sort of the, the real, real problem. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now I'll go down to, uh, we'll go up to a higher grit still. So this is the, the red one. Obviously make sure I get it the right way around. And uh, don't forget to sort of brush off any any sawdust you might have. Any sawdust. Some of you have been doing woodworking, so <laughs> sawdust in the brain. Um, you know, make sure you you knock off the the plastic dust. I'm running my fingernail over it just to see if I can feel any sort of line there because the thing is it's it's very hard to see on sort of raw plastic but um, you'll definitely see it um, when you put a coat of primer on it and of course uh, you know, it uh, means you have to do a bit more clean up there yeah so I can feel almost feels like the glue hasn't sort of just set properly or not. It's like a very little, see that little white mark in there? I can actually get my fingernail in there so, um, yeah, maybe the glue hasn't set properly. I don't know. The primer will get rid of some imperfections, like some very small sort of divots you know, that you might have, but they're sort of on a, the micro level. Unless you use sort of a thicker primer, which I don't really want to do for something at this scale. So I'll just be using the SMS Surfacer Primer. And let's see if we can get this in the light so you can actually see. This other stuff, it's... Uh, was a focus issues. Focus. I'm gonna get it reasonably close because uh, 
Yeah, you can sort of see the way the light's shining on it. I know the color balances out, but um, the way the light's shining on it, it's not picking up any uh, sort of lines um, running horizontal. So that's a that's a pretty good sign. I reckon that's uh, that's pretty close. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and sand the rest of it, and I'll be using a combination of uh, this flexi file, um, you know, sanding sponges, and also these little guys. So I've got quite a bit of work to do, certainly on the underside. But uh, once I've finished that, I'll, um, I'll I'll show you where where it is, where it's at. Okay, so just a bit of an update on the sanding progress. So we've got, um, you can see on the nose here, that's pretty smooth. And so I've sort of left different parts of the fuselage in different states of sanding so you can see what's going on. So what I did for the nose is, you know, progressively higher grit sandpapers and then I finished it off with a, a buffing stick. Um, so that gives it that nice shine and it just makes it really easy to sort of see uh, you know the surface doesn't have to be that smooth to take the paint but you can actually see sort of any sort of imperfections there now the rest of the top here you can see it's not as glossy and that's because it's gone down uh, gone to sort of a finer grit but hasn't been buffed yet so I'll go over that with a buffer now the underside of the plane was a bit of an issue so this panel here i'm not sure whether there's supposed to be a ridge but just in case i actually used a different tool so this is i've used this before it's a citadel uh, seam remover i think it's called um, i think it's the only citadel tool i um i own but the good thing about it is once i've actually sanded this with a low grit sandpaper so something really rough I've actually gone along with the scraper and just scraped along that edge nice and flat to it. And what that's done is it's helped keep that little bit of a ridge there. It's, um, you can see lighter areas in there and that's actually where the glue is. But there's actually sort of a, a ridge. It's not as sharp as the, um, the original, but that's one of the problems you have when you sand, you know, you sort of lose those hard edges. The other thing was this middle bit here. I'm not sure if there's supposed to be a ridge. It sort of almost appears that it's supposed to be sort of concave. Um, so that's what I've gone with. And I just used uh, some flexible sanding sponges to sort of get in there and, um, you know, give it a uh, that, that curved shape in there. And also for the front of the plane, um, this ridge actually wasn't too bad. Didn't need much sanding, but I've just gone in on the sides so just sort of leading up to the edge with the sanding sponge just to maintain that edge but get rid of any of the glue that sort of uh you know spilled over the sides a little bit so of course these ones i've got to go over with um, some higher grit sandpaper but it's getting there i've not come across any sort of serious issues as far as um, stepping or whatever i'm sure there'll be um, some small spots that will be um, that I'll need to go over again once I've primed it. So what I'm going to do is at this stage I'm actually going to uh, finish off with the the buffer and the higher grit sandpapers and then I will give just the seams um, a bit of grey primer so, and on the bottom as well so I can actually sort of see if there's any uh, any issues there and I might come back and, and show you the result of that just to see if I can pick up any any issues with the uh, with the seams with the grey primer. Okay, so I've uh, run a coat of primer just predominantly over the where the seam lines are, just to see how I went with my sanding. So I'm going to point out a couple of things. Um, first of all, the the nose actually came up pretty well. I'm very happy with that. That's uh, that's pretty smooth, and um, doesn't look like there's any obvious sort of seams there. Same with uh, those, the centre bit here. This one has just a little bit of a mark next to the edge around the cockpit. Now down the uh, the back spine of it, there is a little mark here that I'm going to um, patch up. It's very small, but I'm just, uh, you know, when I'm at this stage, I'm going to clean it up. Now as far as the bottom goes, um, I'm pretty happy with the bottom. It's uh, it's come up pretty well. 
if I can get it in focus, there we go. So you can see there's, uh, it's not as sharp as I think it's supposed to be, but there's still a bit of a, a ridge on the back there. And there's certainly no, no seam there. Um, this middle bit, there's, again, there's sort of a hint of a divot in there. And I don't know whether, I don't think I'm going to worry about it just because it's pretty uniform and I'm not sure whether that's supposed to be concave or whether there's supposed to be a bit of a, I guess, a, a panel line down the bottom. Uh, sorry, along the centre. Um, the curved sections here come up really well. There's a tiny, let's see if I can get right in there and uh, get in the light. There's a real slight sort of uh, indentation just at the bottom of the nose there. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fill that and I'm going to talk about some of the stuff that I use for filling, especially stuff like this where it's so fine, um, you know, it doesn't need any sort of major um, putty or anything. So what I tend to use is uh, Mr. Surfacer. This stuff's really good for, obviously for priming, but also um, it's really good for doing really fine sort of filling. So Mr. Surfacer, if you're not aware, this is, um, my understanding is that it's a, a lacquer based um, primer. And it comes in different, um, different numbers and the numbers sort of represent how um, I guess how thick the primer is. So 500 is pretty thick, whereas 1200 is, um, you know, a lot more sort of fluid. So um, they come in a range of, yeah, different, uh, different thicknesses, I guess you could put it. So for this one, I'm going to use the really fine stuff. I'm going to use the 1200. So this stuff, you want to give it a really good shake. And... Have a look when I open it up. You can see that that's actually quite, quite runny. And I'm just gonna and be careful. This stuff really stinks, so you don't want your sort of nose over the, uh, over the pot. What I could do is just get a little bit on a toothpick and just touch it to where, where that gap is. So let it flow into the gap. It might take. Um, yeah, it might take a couple of a couple of coats because um, as it dries, it will shrink a little. So you've just got to be aware of that. And the other one is a little mark just there. And really, for me, that's it. I'm actually really happy with the um, with the way the sanding went. Um, usually, I have a lot more issues than that, but um, obviously, doing it in front of the camera, I um, <laughs> took a little bit more care than I usually do. Okay, so I've uh, I've cleaned up the small uh, areas where I needed to fill in some small gaps. So I've just sanded them down using the Mr. Surfacer to fill in those really small um, gaps I found. So now I'm pretty confident that the fuselage is sort of smooth. I can go ahead and assemble the rest of the tail. Um, I can put this center piece in, the, uh, the wing struts, and I can also mask off the cockpit areas properly. So first of all, I'm just going to take this tape off and I think I'll just give it, I'm just giving it a light sand with a thousand, uh, thousand grit sandpaper just to sort of blend the areas where the masking tape is just in case there's a bit of a, a visible edge there. I don't think there should be, but just in case. The other thing that uh, I want to do is rescribe some of these panel lines. So um, I'll sort of show you how I uh, how I go about that as well. So I'm just giving a light sand just to blend in that edge there. I don't think there should be a problem. This uh, SMS surfacer is very thin, so it's not likely to uh, to cause any headaches. Uh, the other thing I will be doing, of course, is uh, recoating the whole lot in uh, primer 
before I sort of paint it. So I'll just be using the grey primer to do that. conscious of not getting any sort of dust in the cockpit. Alright. So I think this uh, edge area around the cockpit I'm going to paint by hand after I've done all the uh, the rest of the painting of the fuselage. So I'll probably just roughly mask it around where that uh, that surround is. Okay, so let's see. So I've got my instruction. Uh, actually, what I might do is I might do the um, scribing first. Just quickly sort of show you how I do that. Um, I've already sort of done it on the bottom where I, uh, I painted just to make sure that those those panel lines are still come on focus there we go so you see those panel lines but these ones here I'm just going to get a stiff bit bristle brush just to sort of clean out any sanding dust in there before I do the scribing I've got to say that panel line rescribing is not one of my favourite jobs. Um, it's not something that I'm particularly good at. And the tool I'm using here, this is a FlexiFile uh, scribing tool, and it just has this unusual sort of hooked shaped blade on it. But, um, you know, to me, I make one, there's a few of them around, or you can use a chisel. But what I'm doing is just very gently pulling it along the existing panel line. I'm doing it extremely carefully because I don't want to go off the path. As soon as you do that, um, if you create a new line or go off to the edge or whatever, um, if you put a wash in there, the wash will highlight that mistake like nothing else. So you just take your time nice and slow. And given the scale of this, I don't think I need to go particularly deep, but um, I'm just a bit worried that once I put a primer coat on it and the paint coat, that I'm going to lose it all together. So, so I'm just going to go through and scribe these lines. And then I'll come back once that's done. Okay, so I've rescribed the... I've rescribed the panel lines. They're a little bit rough. I reckon I might get away with it just because I'm going to use a very subtle panel line color in there over the red. Um, now some people will use tape to actually use as a guide but I already had the panel lines there so I didn't find it too bad. One thing I am going to do is you can probably see uh, if it'll focus so you can see a bit of, um, just a bit of discoloration of the plastic where it's been a bit stressed when I've cut through it. So to clean that up and clean up any rough edges you have, what I use is to me extra thin and get a very small amount of the brush and just tip it to, just touch it to the, to the edge. So capillary action, it should actually just flow down the line and clean up any of the the rough edges that it has. So I'm going to need the smallest amount and I'm literally just touching it in there and uh, that'll help clean up the clean up panel lines a bit. So you're basically using the glue like you would a panel liner. And it cleans up really well now of course one thing um, you really want to be aware of 
when you're putting fuselage halves together is of course that seam line if you've got any panel lines that actually go over the seam line of course I lost all those when I was sanding so I had to re-scribe those back in so just uh, you know keep that in mind all right so I'm pretty happy with um, the way that is at the moment um, might give it just a quick once over with some thousand grit um, and then give it a bit of a brush down so it just gets rid of any sort of uh, burrs or edges that have sort of come up in the rescribing of the panel lines Also gives the, uh, the surface a bit of tooth for the primer to go down on as well. Just brush out any of the sanding dust from your panel lines because of course once the paint goes over it'll trap that dust in there and it'll fill up your panel lines and all that work will be for naught. All right, I think we're good to go. All right, so now that I'm sort of happy with the um, uh, the seam, I can put the struts for the wings on. I sort of kept this off just because um, it was easier to sort of sand before this was uh, this was put in place. So I'll be able to uh, make sure I get that around the right way first. I'm just checking the orientation. Yep, that looks good. So what we're going to do is just run some glue around that. You're just touching it to the edge and uh, letting the capillary action work in your favour. I'm just lightly pressing it while that plastic's soft just to get it right down in place. And there is quite a sizable gap up this end and there. Yeah. See if we can get a bit more glue in it yeah, just to, uh, to fill it. Now it makes sense there's um, there's actually a panel line that sort of runs from the cockpit to the wing strut so it makes sense that there would be a panel line going all the way across um, so I don't need to worry about sort of sanding under the struts or anything I think that um, that natural seam line will be, uh, will be fine. Okay so that bit's done. Next is, let's have a look at the instructions, uh, the tail. I need to make sure I've got this around the right way. Of course we've got the, the struts that connect on this side, so that goes on the underneath. And this should just slide on. Yep, that feels right. I don't think it needs much glue, it's a pretty tight fit, but um, it's not going to hurt to put a little bit of glue in there. I'm not putting very much in there at all. It does not need to be swimming glue. Just enough to hold it in place. Now I didn't uh, didn't rescribe any of the lines on uh, this particular piece because I think they're deep enough, so I shouldn't have any issues. We'll soon find out once we put a put a primer on it. 
All right, the next thing I do is I'm just going to check whether there's any decals to go on the back here um, just before I put the struts on. It's always a good idea just to check, um, you know, if you've got any decals that are going to cause havoc. And this will be the scheme I'll be going through, which is the scheme that's, of course, on the movie itself. Um, yeah, so we don't have any decals on the rear by the look of it, so that's all right. I'm pretty sure those struts are the same color. Um, if they're not, let's have a look. Let's say, uh, so 68 is the, the red color. I don't actually specify, so I assume it's going to be going to be red as well. A quick look at the box art. Yeah, so they read up the box art. So that's the uh, that's what I'll be doing. Now I've actually already cut these out and cleaned them up. They were too small to do on camera, but I wanted to keep track of the numbers. So what I've done is I've just uh, use a bit of masking tape and, and giving them a number so that way I can know exactly which one goes where because I wasn't sure if there was going to be any sort of major differences between them. I think it's just the orientation of each side uh, but we'll soon find out. So looks like the first one we're going to start with on this side is um, A11. Now there is, uh, it's very hard to see, on the top there it might be just to be able to set in the light, there's a little pin on the end of the strut, whereas there isn't much of one on the other end, so I'm assuming that there are matching holes there that the pins go into. So I'm going to orientate this around the, uh, the right way. And first I'm going to see if it just sits in there. Um, see if it can sit it in there before gluing it. And a miracle of miracles, I think it might actually work. So, I'm going to do. Line it up and get some glue on it. place of the brush. I think that's all it needs. That's all it needs. Yeah, so you, so you can see those pads on the wing there that it's uh, connects to, but there's no hole there. There's just a locating hole on the on the fuselage. All right, so the next one on that side is 13. Yeah, so it is a bit longer. Quick, while it's in blaze, get some glue on it. Yeah, so there are there are slight differences on these struts, so make sure you keep track if you're you're cutting them off the sprue, make sure you keep track of which one's which. Alright, we've got a 10 next. Yeah. 
yeah, so I am glad that I, um, I did put them on tape and number them. The tin goes towards the front. Hmm, this one doesn't seem to be sitting on the pad as well as the other one. Just double check, got the wrong one. Yeah, 18. So while the, um, while the plastic's been softened by the glue, it's always a good time to sort of maneuver it around before the, uh, the glue sets up properly. Okay. The other thing as you mentioned is that what I wanna do is get the fuselage done and I think the engine and the wings, I'll get them uh, you know, with the floats and everything, I'll sort of get that set up and paint them separately. Um, and then I can just put the, the, um, the wing on the top of the fuselage. So that's my plan. Whether I stick to it or not is another thing. All right, and the final one is number 12. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Uh, those little struts are in. And we got this part. Yeah. Nice if it held long enough just to get some glue on it, but I don't think it will get uh, so I'm line it up so it's perfectly. Uh, Glue flat. Get a little bit more glue in here, I think. Now I know there is a couple of decals that go on the back here, so I'm gonna make sure that these um, are some flat. I'm just checking it just while the glue is still still setting up. The other thing is to keep an eye on it too, because it may actually, you know, if you if you take your eye off it, it might sag if you've got the model sitting one way or another. You know, the piece might slowly uh, slowly move on you without you realising it. So just keep an eye on it. All right. Um, yeah, now that's interesting, isn't it? We do have a weight issue. So we can see that it's sitting on its base like that. What I'm going to do is just temporarily put the wing on. Let's see if that uh, see if that holds it up. There's a little bit of weight in the wing, so I think it should be all right. Yep. Okay. What happens when we put the engine on it as well? Is it enough to oh there we go look at that so put the engine on it and it um, sits beautifully um, I would imagine that with the 
with the floats on each side of the wing too gives it a little bit more weight but without that it will drop so if you're building this kit you might want to put a little bit of weight just in the nose just to sort of um, keep it flat on its, uh, on its belly but uh, that's what it looks like we might have dodged a bullet there so the last thing I have to do on the fuselage is to put in, I think it's the thing that measures airspeed, is it? Uh, point it out on the instructions when I find it on the... Yeah, so this thing here, um, need to stick that on the side. Okay. So it's red with a, I think it's got a silver like a little silver piece um, which I'll just brush paint in I think I'm gonna have to put a little bit of glue in there just to uh, get it to get it to stick just long enough so I can uh, maneuver it once it's sort of on there Oh, damn, I'm sure I'm gonna knock that off at some stage but I really need to get it on before I sort of prime everything and start painting the uh, the red so that's uh, pretty much it for this step um, the next next thing for me to do is to prime it so I'll be priming it using surface of grey and for the um, the underbelly, I'm going to paint that first. Uh, the underbelly, of course, is a different colour. Now they call out, I think it's Sandy Brown, um, Mr. Colour Sandy Brown. But I haven't got any Sandy Brown, so what I'm going to go with is um, I'm going to go with tan. Now it looks a bit um, pinky here, but um, I think it should be alright, and I think it'll be a nice offset from the red that I'm going to use. So I'm going to use Italian red which I think is fitting for the and then I'm going to use the uh, the tan for the underside. Um, I think it's a bit lighter than uh, the way it's sort of portrayed in the movie but I think um, yeah I think for me it'll be uh, it'll work out the way I want. So they're the two colors I'm going to use. Um, I will mask up the uh, the cockpit so I think for for this one here, because it's pretty much just the seat and the sides, I'll probably just stuff it with a little bit of towel, just moisten it a little bit. For the cockpit, I'm a bit worried about the control stick, so I don't want to be stuffing stuff in there. So I'll probably just run a bit of tape around the edge and uh, trim it out, and I think that will uh, I think that'll work. So. Yep, that's what I'll be doing. So next time I, um, I'll show you what it looks like once it's uh, been primed and once I've got the bottom, um, the bottom tan in place. So I'll paint that first and then mask that and then do the red. Okay, 